Hello and good evening. Welcome to Heritage University Presents Budget Boot Camp board members. My name is Melissa Rogers and if we have not had the pleasure of meeting before, I am the Vice President of Business Development for Heritage and I am so excited that you've joined us today. Uh, today is going to be an exclusive conversation alongside our Vice President of Accounting, Sharon Moschel. We are going to chat with you about some of the budget basics that you need to have, what maybe is a good checklist in order for you to approach this upcoming budget season, and some very, very important reminders if you are a Heritage client. So while we are going to be speaking about uh, topics related to budget and financials. We are going to be keeping the information discussed in the most general uh, means possible. So if you do have questions related specifically to your association, we encourage you to reach out to your association manager, or if you are not partnering with a community management company, then we certainly encourage you to reach out to your attorney representing the association for any further clarifications. All right, so Last housekeeping rule before we get into the presentation. Um, for those of you that are staying with us live, you are more than welcome to drop questions throughout the presentation in the chat or the Q&A uh, bubbles that are up in, should be the middle of your top screen or uh, more so to the right. And while we are going to take the Q&A at the end of the presentation, we certainly don't want you to forget those questions and put them at the relevant time, and we will certainly make sure that we address them. So for the next 60 minutes, we sincerely appreciate your time, attention, and effort. I'm now going to introduce you to Ms. Sharon Moschel. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sharon Moschel, and um, as Melissa said, I'm VP of Accounting and Finance. Um, I run the accounting department. For those of you who don't know, we are made up of about uh, 17 employees in accounting. We have eight property accountants and uh, four AR and um, five accounts payable. So we have a whole team of support um, in accounting. So we're excited to be able to present this uh, budget boot camp to you guys today because I know everybody is involved in the budgets right now. Um, uh, we're, let's start off. Josh, next. So what exactly is a budget? Why do we even need one? Um, I actually looked this up. A budget is an estimation of revenue and expenses over a specified future period of time and is utilized by governments, businesses, and individuals. Not everyone uses the budgets, including in the government and the individual categories, but most businesses you will definitely find have to operate on a budget. So a budget is basically a spending plan. And I emphasize plan. It is not a black and white defined um, plan of action. It is a spending plan for a defined period of time, and normally it's a year, and it is known to greatly enhance the success of any financial undertaking. Particularly in our industry, we are dependent upon a limited amount of cash. Um, if we don't have enough cash, we're not gonna do bake sales or increase our, our um, uh, income in any other manner other than homeowners association assessments. So having a budget keeps your spending in check and make sure your savings are on track for the future. Next, common budget concerns and errors. Wow, this is very, very important. What we're seeing as we're creating a budget and we're thinking about our expenditures, often we know that the homeowners don't want to increase the dues. So that's a big concern for those of, of us who are doing the budget. Many budgets don't assume we're having any delinquencies. It puts in a whole, um, uh, 100% of the assessments, but you need to plan on delinquencies because as we all know, not everybody pays their assessments. Many of budgets omit a contribution to the reserve fund, which is extremely important to save for the future expenditures. And the importance of budget is not communicated to homeowners. You know, if you would communicate to all of the homeowners, you will get a much more 
wide acceptance of the association fees when they know where the money is being spent. So why are annual budgets important? Nonprofits require a budget. Your association is known as a really a not for profit. Um, we want to do a zero budget because we're not planning on making an income. We actually are looking at accountability more than a profit and a loss. Another um, important annual um, budgets are very important for the associations are weak on planning. Um, nothing happens in the association without any money and cash gives the association flexibility, to maintain and improve their value, which that's really what it's all about. It's the uh, board's responsibility to maintain and improve the asset, which is your community. Next. Common association financial issues to avoid. Huge, huge, huge. Being underfunded, poor stewardship, no long term plan. This is probably the number one um, issue that we find in, in providing the budget. Um, especially for long term plans, as we well know in the condominium uh, world, you have to plan for long term. The whole common areas of the condos, the roofs, the painting, all those types of things are long term. And if you don't plan for it, you will definitely underfund it. Homeowners that don't understand the uh, association's obligations. I love this one when a homeowner told me one day, he said, well, well, the association's supposed to pay for that. Well, where do you think the association gets their money from? It's the homeowners. So they're not quite understanding sometimes what all the association has to pay. Um, high delinquency, woo, that's a big one. If you're not collecting all of your monies, then that will definitely create a financial issue and, and uh, problems with your budget. Sometimes board members get confused by the financial issues and sometimes they overcomplicate. We uh, we use a cash basis. We account for money in and money out. So you want to plan accordingly to that type of budget and board members really find themselves in trouble when they try to penny pinch and not spend all of the uh, necessary money to maintain their uh, communities assets. Next. So what's the role of the treasurer? This is a biggie. I have a, a whole treasurer's training class that we, we talk about this. Um, the role of the treasurer is to coordinate the setting of the financial budget. All right, they're the one, the main person that reviews the um, P&L, profit and loss, or statement of revenues and expenses. And so they're reviewing how our monies are spent compared to what you anticipated or planned the expenditure to be. So they help develop and manage written policies, <clears throat> including collection policies. They coordinate management of cash assets. Hold on. <clears throat> Pardon me. They manage the cash assets. How much do we have in the checking account? Do I need to transfer money from reserves to cover expenditures into the checking account? Do I need to move some money out of checking account into reserves? That's the type of thing they monitor. Uh, they also are looking at the goals versus the budgets and ensure, ensure the association um, does business in the right way. It's very important that you run your association as this, if it is a true business as it is. It is not um, designed to be um, a, uh, uh, I got my word. Wait a minute. Hold on. It is not designed to be just a family business. It is actually an IRS. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, it is actually reported to the IRS as a regular business. So you have to have documentation. To ensure that your books are correct. Next. All right, so here's four keys of, of a successful HOA. Manage those revenue collections. This is huge. This is like I said before, this is your only source of income. Usually every once in a while you'll get some late fees. You'll get some um, interest. You might even get some movie money uh, where they've used your association to make a movie, but your primary revenue is only your assessments that you're collecting. 
So you basically have to manage that cash position money in and money out. You can only spend the amount of money that you have. You need to be setting the financial goals and measuring the performance. These are true keys to being able to keep up with your expenditures and meeting the fiduciary duties to the association. You always want to act on the best interest of the association, doing business the right way, making sure the assets of the associations are protected because that's your main goal. And you want to be sure to be transparent with your communication to the homeowners. That is going to buy in your success. Next, please, Josh. Treasurers be able to answer these questions. All right. Do we have good financial processes and systems in place? Are all the homeowners paying their assessments? Are we paying all of our bills on time? Are we getting good value and not overpaying? Do we have a good budget and are, are we on track? Do we have money for an emergency? And are we sufficient money, saving money for long-term replacement? These are the questions that normally a homeowner or else the other board members would be asking the treasurer. So these are the types of subjects that you can look at. Next. What are assessments and revenues? The homeowner dues, like we mentioned before, are your biggest and most important source of income for any association, any and all associations. They're used to support the common expenses. You know, for example, the private roads, the street lights, services, utilities, uh, commonly owned buildings and pools, maintenance. Um, when determining your annual assessment to the homeowner, it's important to consider what funds are required. There should always be two funds. We use an operating account and a reserve account. All of your normal assessment payments for these normal operating everyday items come out of the operating fund. And those that are capital items come out of the reserve fund, which is more like your savings. Special assessments are also an option for dealing with revenue shortages and special projects. And your governing documents will indicate when and how a special assessment can be done. Some special assessments can be automatically created and others have to have the homeowner support. When billing homeowners for their dues, it is important, very important to make the billing as easy and logical for them as possible and give them multiple ways to pay. Here at Heritage, we have eight different ways a homeowner can make their payment. Next. All right, how are the reserves funded? Communities should set goals for the amounts of money to be funded in reserves. This needs to be budgeted. The best practice is to have an updated reserve study and base the goal on the amount of the most recent study. This is very important because you want to have support for the assessments that you're going to be asking the homeowners to pay. This is the best. Um, tool that you have to be able to share with the homeowners but say you don't have a reserve study in the absence of a reserve study the community the community should determine a goal based on the needs of the community so one good ballpark is a reserve fund equal to one year's assessments okay so that's kind of what you should be planning for to put into reserves if possible communities should set up a goal for short term uh, emergency, which we recommend probably about uh, two months worth of your operating expenses. This will also help you fund any of your insurance deductibles that you're required to pay. Next. So what is a reserve study, you ask? Reserve study is a report and it is performed every three to five years by an experienced professional engineering company. This study offers a, a complete inventory of all of the assets of the facilities. They have experience in determining the replacement cost and when the items would need to be replaced. Um, this now normally is over a 30 year time period, so they could actually determine when the estimated time period would be to resurface the tennis courts. 
um, for an example. So the reserve study is a very important tool to help you support your uh, financial needs. So the funding of the savings plan, the reserve, multiple names here, provides alternative saving plans to have the money when it is needed during those 30 years. You put money aside for anticipated future expenditures. The annual budget contribution, which is saved every year from the homeowner's assessment, is part of the budget. You actually have to plan that. Okay, next. Budgetary preparation checklist. This is very good, very good listing of what you will need. Now the Property managers have already started with some of your budgets. Um, sorry, the budgets. And you will need to have some of this information as well when you're reviewing and going over the budgets with your property manager. They already have a lot of this information. But you want to start off with your budget looking at actual prior expenses and how you did with your budget from the prior year. Um, you want to have a listing of your vendor contracts, some utility rate changes. We've had some of those this year for sure. Um, new community business plan, a new year community business plan for the association. What is it you're trying to do this year? Um, economic and inflation factors that come into effect. We all know that inflation is definitely up this year. An association experience with delinquencies. This is huge. You can actually calculate your um, delinquency uh, percentage based upon the statement of revenues um, and expenses. Reserve study, you know, annual contribution to reserves based upon that reserve study. And expected capital expenditures, expenditures for the new year. And now when you're budgeting for these capital, you don't put everything that you want to do. It's truly you're only budgeting the capital expenditure you're anticipating to truly do this year. And it may need a major capital expenditure that that has to be done in this year. Next. All right, so let's give you a little example of a business plan. Things you want to think of. What what do you want to accomplish for your community? It could be that you want to pay all the vendors on time. That's kind of obvious to me. Uh, we might want to set aside emergency fund. Um, we want to make sure our delinquency is low, is, is less than nine for sure. But you want to maybe, uh, might be a business plan to concentrate on your delinquencies. Uh, we might want to reduce water um, expenses through submetering, new pool furniture, uh, publish quarterly newsletter, perhaps. Um, Homeowner survey, you might want to take a survey and have some mailing expend expenditures. So this is just a sample of some business plan that you and the board as a board need to discuss and plan and think about what you want to do accomplish next year. Next. All right, like I said before, we actually are a cash basis accounting um, and what we're actually looking at doing is spending our uh, the expenditures of the associations that you're collecting right but how do we know how much money that we need to us to assess the uh, homeowners so i'm going to give you an example here in your xyz budget we might have some landscaping legal of course you got a lot more expenses than that and definitely putting money into savings, your total cost might be $600. But you're not going to just collect $600 from your homeowners for their uh, assessments. You're also thinking about doing some capital expenditures, right? Well, the new equipment, the clubhouse repair, <coughs> sorry, these things are actually expenditures coming from the reserve. So when we go to budget, we put down our new capital expenditures, but we want to include a transfer over from reserves. So these types of things are, are what you're looking at to actually calculate what your assessments will be. Um, so in this particular case, you've got your expense, expenses 
of six hundred dollars and you're also planning on spending another nine hundred but that nine hundred doesn't come out of the operating it will definitely come out of reserves okay next so looking at it again in a different way <clears throat> your operating expenses plus your reserve contribution divided by the total number of units that is your assessment income needed okay um, for example at $45,000 could be your operating expenditures plus your reserve that money that you're going to put into savings for future expenditures your total would be 50,000 divided by 100 homes each homeowner would need to pay 500 per year so you want to start off not with your income you want to start off with your expenses and back up to what your income would be needed to satisfy those expenses next budget basics this is so 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 important resist the urge to not change the assessment from last year i have several board members before, including my own personal association in Florida, were so proud that they had not changed the assessments from year to year. Oh, we've had the same assessments for four years. <clears throat> That's not good because you know that the expenses over the last four years have gone up. It is so much easier to increase your assessments just a little bit than having to all of a sudden make huge drastic differences. So the best thing to do is to increase every year a small amount of your assessments for sure. Get home, homeowners used to asking questions on the budget and get good answers to show that you've worked diligently on the budget numbers. This is so important to get the homeowners involved in where their money's going, how they're spending the money, and the cost of items. Um, it's very important too to, to provide some comments on the budget lines. You know, you may go through it and think of it now, and then next year you want to look at your budget and like, why did we do that? Where was the cost? Little notes are very helpful. And do not as assume all expenses will be annualized when you're doing your budget. Uh, Vantica, if you plug a number in, we're automatically dividing it by 12, but we do know for a fact that, um, you know, your, uh, uh, perhaps your tax bill comes in October. It is not a divided by 12 type of item. It's only an October expenditure. So don't assume all expenses will be analyzed. Insurance is another one. If you pay it all at one time, you might pay it in one month. Uh, incorporate the community plan so that you can get that into the budget to know what your expenditures are going to be. You just had that discussion. You just planned on doing these things. So you want to make sure it goes into the budget. Next. Reserve fund contributions. <clears throat> Again, we already stated that you need to keep your reserve study current because this is your best tools to support future expenditures. If it says that you're going to, reserve study says you're gonna need a, um, a roof in 10 years, then that's what you need to plan on. But in eight years, you might need that roof. You might not need it till 12 years. It's just a guesstimate, but you do need to keep it current. Um, it is very, very important. Like I said, it's a great tool. So no reserve study. Again, you should be able to, to still set aside some money for future expenditures. One year, if there's no um, uh, reserve study done in general, and then a couple of months at least for emergency fund. Next. Okay, Sharon, I'm actually going to take the reins here. For oh, yay. Okay. Yeah, the last <laughs> couple of slides. Uh, listen. I wanted to speak to something that you were just talking about when it comes to, you know, resisting the urge not to uh, change your assessments from several previous years past. We understand community associations, period, whether you have professional management or you don't. We have seen both last year and this year huge increases, cost of goods, 
services, man hours we're starting to see. And I know you you've seen this and, and your accounting team is so dedicated to helping us with this. You guys have outlined and, and noticed that some companies are charging new, you know, fuel surcharges mm-hmm. and, and we're we you know, your accounting team is is sifting through and, and trying, oh, wow, we see this is a reoccurring thing. We need to notify everybody that this is, you know, happening. And so on that basis, I really uh, sincerely appreciate that. But uh, I also want to acknowledge the fact that these are going to be difficult conversations. And if you didn't have a difficult conversation last year, friends, you're going to have a difficult conversation this year. And the hope is what we've just covered when you when you are communicating information to your association, you're giving them the opportunity to be in the know as to why these decisions are being made. Listen, let's face it, you've been elected the board of directors. Your association has already bestowed you the power and the authority to make decisions on their behalf, right? Um, So surely doing the budget process and taking this incredibly seriously, but Maybe instead of delivering just the financials at the annual meeting, maybe you should consider as an association having a town hall prior mm-hmm. to the budget being adopted. That way your your homeowners feel included in the process and and um, you know also have the opportunity to hear your thought process as to why things are the way that they are. So um, taking notes like we outlined in a couple of the last slides, uh, Sharon indicated, you might not be a board member that next year and that homeowner that's brand new might not know the decision that you made if you did not put those notes because remember right. <clears throat> in so many of our other classes we talk about your meeting minutes should be like super simple so if there is going to be discussion there's no problem and, and no reason why you should not have ample notes and and uh resources that support the decisions that you're making especially during this budgetary process so these next two slides before we wrap up uh our evening and get to the q a is going to be whether or not um again you have professional management and then some heritage expectations that you can see from your community manager so right here on this slide we're talking about who does what? Um, and I think that this is in a very important slide to take away that if the manager person is not existent in your association, then that is more than likely board members. So you can insert any other title in there other than manager, maybe president, maybe the treasurer does those things too. Maybe all of you are responsible for doing certain things. but. If you are working with a professional management company, AKA Heritage, um, here's definitely what we can tell you that you should be expecting. And Sharon is correct. Our CAMs have been working, oh, it's August since Mm -hmm. June. So we have been in the thick of budget season for the last several weeks. Um, Your community manager has been reviewing your contracts, your financials, that budgetary checklist that we talked about, the, uh aging report what are our historical trends you know something that we didn't point out in the sli- in the slides previously there's a couple of different ways that you can approach a budget you can do uh, a zero budget which means uh, you're not factoring in anything from uh, historical information and just as sharon said you're tallying up all of your expenses and identifying that that's how much money you need to assess the association or there is more commonly which probably a lot of you are currently utilizing which is going to be that historical trend method which maybe you've got a couple of extra years i know vanica has some amazing budget comparison reports that your managers are looking at that maybe you even as board members in vanica have access to this um where you can see your variance i mean you're looking at that when you look at your monthly financials but Some of you, when it comes to budget season, you're doing a couple of years or maybe up to five years. That's what we call historical trend um, budgetary approach. So uh, just knowing that, obviously, once your community association manager has created that initial uh, draft budget, okay, and think about it from this perspective, we're the industry professional not only are we here to help your homeowners and help make sure that the association's business is 
um, you know, running and being recorded appropriately. Absolutely, we're here to be your administrative right arm, but we also want to be able to provide our interpretation of where we see your community going. And again, it's just that it is a recommendation. And so then we give that to the treasurer. So now comes in the treasurer, which is this is a big responsibility for you. And just as Sharon indicated, she actually just gave a class two weeks ago about this. Um, so understanding that while you may uh, as a treasurer not be the one that actually approves the budget, you know, you are going to be the one that reviews the draft on behalf of the board or brings it to the board for consideration. And then you amongst yourselves or as board members or as the treasurer, you make those updates or you make the additional notes of consideration and then you submit it to the board and or you submit it back to the community manager. And so as you see, we're doing the business plan because what an appropriate and great time to get to know your association. And uh, Sharon and I love saying this, <clears throat> you can tell us anything you want to about your community, but your financials tell us everything <laughs> we need to know about how you have been running your association. So, you know, that business plan is a fantastic option for you and you as the board of directors, this is part of your responsibility. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that's, you know, five and 10 years out, you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time, one year at a time. Maybe if you, you know, are elected and you know that uh, each of you is going to be on term for the next two years, you can certainly consider what's the term um, of your volunteerism efforts going to look like. Sure, I, I totally think that that would be a value, especially for your time and your efforts, but really strategize this puppy one year at a time, especially because of what we're seeing in the activity in our environment with shipping shortages and, uh, you know, the mail is still unfortunately uh, a huge hindrance and we're still seeing delays in, in getting information and just, you know, mail in, in and of itself and then obviously your owners um, and I, I put this right here the owners have the least amount of responsibility when it comes into what you do for the budget again we kind of talked about that maybe you should consider uh, and you don't have to by any means but if your community has a lot of conversation or if you know that you're going to be increasing the assessments and it is just going to cause a really big conversation, combat that. Don't make your annual meeting um, something that everybody dreads going to or is like, you know, bringing pitchforks uh, with them, you know, to make sure that, you know, they're going to remove you from the board. That That's not at all what we want you to have to experience. We want you to have that empirical data by using your reserve study. We want you to have a sound business plan so that you can appropriately communicate to the association what you're doing. And then as an earlier slide identified, use that as your success story. So many boards do not give themselves enough credit for the work that they actually do within the community. That's your job and it's OK. Listen, everybody is going to have a struggle. There's going to ultimately be something that goes off the rails at some point without anybody's fault and you're going to have to bring maybe not savory information to the community. So always board take advantage of any opportunity to celebrate your success. You have a responsibility to gain other volunteers to the board. So if you're doom and gloom and, you know, constantly raising assessments or, um, you know, not communicating with the association about why things are not being done, what they think should be prioritized, giving them that opportunity is important, but very much so understand that little second bullet right there. Most governing documents for associations allow for the board of directors <clears throat> to be the one to approve the budget. Very rarely, although it does happen, very rarely do we see um, a provision within the declaration that allows for the membership to approve the budget. And when that happens, yes, you absolutely have to have a meeting of an ownership and there's a whole process that's outlined for that. 
Um, it, it's not common, but most of the time, almost I would almost say like 95% of the time, take a look at your declaration, it's the board that approves your budget. All right, so let's wrap up uh, moving forward. Let's wrap up with the upcoming deadlines and due dates that we have um, for both you board members and the community managers themselves. On this next slide, we're gonna see what the drop dead dates are. Um, and sad that, that I just used that term. Go ahead uh, to the next slide, please. Um, but truly, these are, the, these are the dates in which that we absolutely have to have um, the information in the system. Okay, so we talked about your community manager has, is uh, doing uh, the budget and the communication um, about uh, the timeline um, and getting your contracts together. Mm -hmm. This has already actually been done, completed. Your community managers at this particular time are actually submitting their first draft consideration um, to their directors for their review and input. Um, we also, just as a asterisk, not everybody is a calendar year for their fiscal year. Um, there are some associations that have their fiscal year starting in March. Some start their fiscal year in July. Some start their fiscal year in October. We have seen someone, you know, there, there is a healthy percentage of those that I want to make sure that you understand that plug and place these due dates just in that six month time period that your requirements are, because this is a very set and appropriate best business practice for you to consider, whether you've got management or you don't have management, okay? Um, September 17th, if you have not yet received your uh, rough draft, meaning some of you in the audience right now or watching this on replay have probably already received this from your community manager. If you have not, you are definitely uh, going to have a copy by this time period, September 17th, and we board would like to ask you for your input too on what that budget or excuse me, business plan is. Again, we will make some recommendations, but we would love your guidance with that as well as we go into creating our first draft. And then October 14th, so okay board, you now have it. This is the time period between September and October. You've got a month to make modifications and to host a uh, board meeting or uh, whatever your approval authority is and get your uh, budget approved. We need to go ahead and have that back as soon as possible in the month of October. As you see right there, most of the associations that have a fiscal calendar year budget and have their required due date of the budget to the association by December 1st, or <clears throat> quote unquote, within 30 days of the uh, prior start date. Um, most of the time, you also are required to send out your annual meeting notice within that time period. Sometimes it's both at the same meeting where you release the information, mm -hmm. or sometimes not. Um, because an annual meeting notice and a budget is still something that uh, is not really deemed acceptable to send electronically, we still have to send these out, you know, snail mail, the correct way to do it. And more specifically, BBNT slash Truist is going to send out the statements and slash coupons to um, your homeowners. And I'll get to that here in just a second. So between October 14th, Okay, we're in the month of October, between September and the end of October. We need you board to be on the ball, review your budget. We need you to make those modifications and get those uh, updates back to us. We need your approval. Um, we need you to physically sign the document. This is a best business practice mm -hmm. that ensures that we absolutely know this was the intended budget of approval. It allows us to have that hard backup for you in addition to your meeting minutes, in addition um, you know, to what you communicate out to the association. Sharon can attest, we mm -hmm. see sometimes 12 <coughs> draft versions of a budget before it's ever seen the light of day for approval, okay? We do not want you to get confused in the process, nor do we want um, you know, any of us, especially uh, the accounting team, 
to be confused during this process. So it's very, very important that we get that information back from you and it's approved. And by approved, we mean it is executed with a signature. Um, please get with your community manager and your director on that process. We will be rolling that out to you when we actually roll out your budget. And if you have your budget already and are getting ready to do the approval process, definitely get with them uh, because we do have electronic signature capability. So on that note, go down to the very bottom uh, on the yellow. This is actually for our community managers, but we are very transparent with you board that we wanna set these expectations. We're not telling you you have to do these things because we're trying to be ugly. Um, we're telling you that in, in order to ensure mm -hmm. the required <laughs> delivery date to your association, these are tried and true practices that we've done year over year, especially given the fact that the mail has been a little bit um, slowed over the last two years for various reasons. It's so crucial to understand that once we get that approved budget from you board, we have to re-update that in Vanica. Then Sharon and her team go ahead and they mm -hmm. review it and make sure that the uh, order for whether or not your homeowners are monthly assessments or annual assessments, depending on what that is, your community manager is going to submit that order to their uh, accounting, uh, their property accountant, and then that's what's going to be issued to BBNT slash Truist, and that's what they're going to send out the new coupon of statements to your ownership. Um, and again, Sharon could tell you, I think we we are allowed to include like one additional piece of paper, which is why we we oftentimes include the budget mm -hmm. on there. Sometimes yes. uh, we definitely encourage front and back when you're dealing with those things. So um, Sharon, do you have any other points to add on this particular slide? Um, you know, th this slide, in my opinion, is is probably or the last slide was probably <laughs> the most important. <laughs> You know, out of everything. Mm -hmm. no, no, it's OK. Hey, listen, they're going to get a recording in and a playback of this, so not to worry. But uh, I definitely think that um, out of anything that we want you to take away from tonight, certainly we want you to be prepared for the upcoming budget season. But if you are a true heritage partner, that last slide is going to be gold. If you want to have a successful annual meeting season, if you want to make sure that uh, your budget's not contested by the ownership, get those due dates. Um, and again, I hate to say it, sometimes life happens. If you did not see the information or you're still you know, waiting on something from your community manager in October, certainly get with the director. Um, and, and I'm sure you're probably going to have communication beforehand. So things are still very much so in the early stages because I don't know why I feel like um, we're in October already, but we're really only at the end of August. Um, and I should be happy about this because it's about to be football season anyway. All right. So now on to our questions and answers. Cher, did you, uh, forgive me, did you have anything else to input to that last slide? I just wanted to, to mention that um, the deadline of November 18th is so BB&T or Truist has time to um, get these coupons out to the homeowners because we are not their only customer. This is a nationwide mail out that they do for many customers. So they, we, it is our goal and the homeowners have to have something in hand January 1 to make their payments. And that's the big key because if they don't have their statement or coupons um, in hand, then we really start running into some issues. So that's the goal is to get their coupon in hand, ready to pay by January 1. That's why we have the deadline. Good, and, and I agree, and thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. So now we've got a couple of really good questions. Ooh, I always love it when we have good questions. <laughs> All right, so ooh, somebody addressed me specifically. Thank you. Melissa, what would be the timing of a town hall before finalizing the budget? If we finalize on November 1, oh, it went away. Hold on. I see where you put it. Um, sorry, it went away, Kate. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's OK. Um, if finalized on November 1st, the town hall should be before, correct? 
Yes. So think of a town hall as a special meeting. Great question. And let me say it one more time. OK, if we're recommending a town hall before the budget needs to be approved and I'm drilling in you that you need to have it approved in October, mm -hmm. um, when would be an appropriate time to have a town hall? Um, really follow the special notice requirement of your uh, meeting procedures and your bylaws. Generally speaking, the special meeting provisions are way shorter time periods, um, maybe even 10 days um, at the most. So the good news is if you're worried about scheduling, generally speaking, um, the special meetings within your bylaws have a shorter meeting notice requirement. Obviously, you are you are going to have to to put out another mail out to the association notifying them, but this could be a great uh, virtual option for you too. And again, we we this is a budget class, so we're not really going to talk about the annual meeting per se in this class. We will talk about it later in the year, um, but certainly discussion. Because again, a town hall is just that. There's no decisions made. It's just a discussion. And oftentimes, um, we really want there to be that dialogue of the back and forth. But some boards um, like to utilize that time, ask for questions beforehand, and then only push out information um, in the town hall. So I would definitely suggest it's the end of uh, August. You can easily have a nice town hall at the beginning of of uh, October and still be well within your time periods to make the approval time um, to get everything updated. Um, but definitely double check with your community manager if you have one and if you do not, and this is more specific, feel free to uh, connect with me offline and I will certainly help. OK, I'm new to the board and wondered if there is an archive kept that we can access of documents kept from the past years. Hey, uh, Sharon, I'm going to let you answer that one. <laughs> yes, we do have, if they are saved, um, we do have copies of prior budgets, but if you run any financial um, information, you will see prior budget, prior um, actuals. You can actually go to the portal and, and run prior year um, uh, reports. One of them that I particularly like a, a whole lot is your uh, cash forecast. And even if you ran it for a prior year, you will actually have all of your actual expenditures. It also has a budget, so it compares very, very good uh, reporting on how you did with your um, actuals compared to your budget. And that's a very good report to see how you major expenditures um, uh, on a month to month basis. So, but you can run those and we have that a bit, that capability of getting that information. Nice, yes, and thank you for sharing your favorite report. I mm -hmm. couldn't remember if it was the budget spread or if it was this one that you just said. The so. actual cash forecast report. Yeah. And it, it's a very good tool to use currently on, a, uh, on your month to month comparison. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. OK, so um, Sharon, we talked about this one in the class, so let's just try to uh, say it one more time. We've got a question just uh, shoring up. What would be the guideline percentage contribution for a reserve fund? Uh, that would deter that would depend, right? Mm -hmm. As with most of these answers that we're going to say tonight, it's going to depend on um, whether or not you actually have a reserve study, um, whether or not you have funds currently existent in your reserve and you are just looking for a benchmark. This is where we were talking about at least, you know, something to aspire to is one year's worth of the annual assessments. Um, obviously, if you're a newer association or if you've just turned over and you don't really have a whole lot of assets just yet, um, definitely, uh, and especially if you've just turned over, definitely get that reserve study because you it's going to be fantastic to uh, help you in determining, especially if you're still relatively new. Maintenance doesn't really start to show itself until about age right. 15, 20 of an association. So, we do see a lot of newly instituted boards after turnover. Sometimes 
do that poor stewardship and underfund or they don't increase the assessments mm -hmm. a couple of percentage points every year and set that expectation because they are misguided in the thought well there's no maintenance right now well you're right so now's the best time to set the example for what the budget's going to be like and then go ahead and put forth a reserve contribution i will say when it comes to percentages that's when you're oftentimes dealing with condominiums and mm -hmm. it uh sometimes the condo uh you know your condo declaration might specifically outline a specific amount um but most of the condominium associations require a 10 percent uh contribution. contribution to the reserve funds every year and you must be able to show that on the budget in order to be eligible among other things other other requirements must be made other than the 10 percent contribution but if you are going to be considered your association or individual homes within your community for fha funding uh for loans okay um sharon Correct. do you have anything else to add on that one um, no, that's that's true, but you need definitely need to get in the habit of funding something. And yeah. with that approved budget, when you put that approved budget in, we will automatically in accounting transfer those funds from operating to reserve as it is budgeted and, and it is an expense. So we will automatically put there. Sometimes associations will wait until year end and fund it all at one time, which is okay. But if you have a monthly budget of funds going into reserves, we will put that in there automatically. Oh, I love that you brought that up, Sharon, because we did not discuss that earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are generally two different ways and the approval of the budget is right. what tells us what you're going to be putting into your uh, reserves every month or at the end of the year. So correct. Right. All right. The next question has to do with disproving the budget. And this is a hot topic. Um, we get these questions every year about who is approving, who can, has the authority and what's the process. So what section of the governing documents references whether the membership can disprove, disprove the budget? Um, it's going to be in your declaration and it might also be in your bylaws. <laughs> but most specifically, the declaration um, will outline um, the budget computation process. And more than likely, if the budget computation process includes that, it's going to state it specifically and it's going to state the process in which the uh, budget is uh, has to be disproved essentially. Um, so there is there is a form or or I should say there is a practice or a procedure that every association <coughs> just like amending a declaration. If the uh, association wishes to disprove the budget, there is a process that they have to follow, which is unique to your individual governing documents. Um, and just so that you know, friends, if the budget is disproved or in the is pending being disproved, your de facto operating budget is the most previously uh, approved operating budget, which was going to be the year previous. So you will still be able to operate as all of our slides this evening told you a budget is a best guess. We want to supply you with the other resources like reserve studies to be able to help you along that and create more of an educated best guess. Um, what is that? A hypothesis, I think mm -hmm. it is, right? Uh, so, hey, we're having so much fun tonight talking about budgets and yay. Uh, do you have anything to add on that one, Sharon? No, that, that's that's true. I, I, I do want to emphasize that it is just a plan. It is just a guess. And um, if you have an expenditure that is not necessarily budgeted, you don't plug it into a budgeted item. You put that expenditure in the proper GL so that you can budget for it next year. So um, again, a budget is just a plan. Tells a story, and that's a really that's mm -hmm. a really good thing, you know. And as community managers, even if you're brand new to Heritage, and we did not do your budget last year, and we have to hypothesize what we think even our business recommendation of the first draft is going to be, that's something that we're going to look at. Hey, did you budget for 
last year or the year before? Ooh, no, I don't see that you did. Question mark, hey board, what was this for? You know, some things are gonna be very easy mm -hmm. where we can see, ooh, okay, um, I don't know. Uh, they stopped doing, you know, they stopped irrigating this area. So it was, it did have an irrigation charge on this annual budget, but it doesn't, you know, in, in this next one, we can see those things um, and it's much easier for us to read. And again, like Sharon will say to anybody, <laughs> she can read your association like it's a story. Book. Yep, yep, it sure is. I sure okay. can. Here's, here's a good question for you, Sharon. Um, and I would love for you to em emphasize the procedure again as to how we do this, but should a reserve fund be kept in a separate bank account? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but we, uh, that. <laughs> yeah, we we um we definitely put the funds in a different uh, checking account. So one reason is so that it's not readily available and overspent in your operating expenses. So we do put them into a reserve account and you have the fiduciary responsibility to keep those funds safe and liquid. However, uh, we do have some options so that we can get some interest on some of those funds, um, which if you're interested in that, I'd be happy to um, talk to you about it. And uh, But we do keep them separate in a different account. And we have to do a written transfer request from the board in order to move any monies. So Correct. we talked about when the budget's approved and, and Sharon just said, maybe you do a monthly contribution to your reserve and maybe you do an annual and you true it up at the end of the year. Regardless of how you do it, it's very important. One of the other things too, did we discuss what's the difference between considering uh, a budget for reserve versus what should be put into um, the operating account? What would you recommend it would be the differentiator to know for a board? If this was their first time doing the budget, what would you tell them how to classify the two? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. Sorry. Marissa. OK, so um, if I have to resurface the pool this year, mm -hmm. is that a capital improvement or is that? No, distinguish between operating and capital expenditures. Yeah. OK, gotcha. Yeah, sorry. one of the big. Yeah, that's OK. One of the big um, um, examples that I've given before is, for example, if you're changing a light bulb, obviously that's a maintenance. You know, you're fixing a light, that's a repair. But say you go through your community and you change out all of the light bulbs to LED light bulbs, that's a capital expenditure. So capital expenditure is not necessarily just on the, the dollar amount that's associated with that spend. It is also on what type of a spend is it and is it something that's going to repeat itself every year? Um, you're always going to have uh, repairs and you're always going to have maintenance. If you're repairing um, holes in the roof, that's just a regular repairs and maintenance. But when you get that new roof, that is going to be a capital expenditure. It extends the life of that asset. In the normal bank uh, business world, we're able to depreciate that type of thing um, over the lifetime uh, of the asset. But in our world, since we're operating on cash, it's just a cash expenditure. And we're hoping that you have enough cash in reserves to pay for that expenditures. Um, if not, we do have loans that are available. So, um, but there is a difference between capital uh, planning and, and expenditures for operating. Absolutely, thank you. And I'm sorry that I dovetailed that, that whole question. No, that's okay. It got me thinking about it and I was like, ooh, we never yeah. brought this up or we didn't highlight it in a lot mm -hmm. of detail, I should say. It was on one slide. All right. Are though our association's fiscal year is January 1st to December 31st, our assessment due date is February 1st. Does this odd date change the timeline for the budget to be approved? Uh, no, it doesn't. Because if you're a fiscal year, Take a look at what your declaration says is what you have to notice your association for the upcoming budget. OK, so even though your assessments might not be due until February, just because you're not a traditional January 1st assessment has nothing to do or I should say collection frequency 
has mm -hmm. nothing to do with what the board uh, budget per your declaration has a delivery date for. And I can guarantee you, it sounds like you're still going to follow suit with uh, the schedule. But that is a very good clarifying question because, uh, and that's actually, I think, one of the first times I've, I've heard that question. But again, we're delineating just because your collection due date mm -hmm. might be different than what you might find as traditional. Take a look at what your declaration says for the computation of the budget and the delivery of the of the budget to the association. It's definitely in there in your declaration. Um, and again, it might be different for each association, so go specifically to your documents. When considering moving a lump sum from operating to reserves by the end of the year, is there a Vanica report we can use to project the amount to retain in our operating account to cover the first quarter of 2023 while we wait for the assessment income to be remitted? That's a good question. That's a good one. Yeah. You want me to take that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. If you're looking at your statement of revenues and expenses in December, you will see your excess funds that you want to move prior to December 31st um, from operating into reserves. But of course, you're looking at your cash flow. So basically, if you take a look at what your traditional prior actuals expenditures were, if you look at January, February, March, if you're going to do a quarter, then you want to um, take that into consideration. However, if you go ahead and transfer that access for this year into reserves, there's nothing that says you can't transfer from reserves to help you out if you have a shortfall the first few, few, first few months before you're able to collect your assessments. That's a fantastic answer, and thank you for that very detailed question. It's a very legitimate mm -hmm. one, and I guarantee you somebody else in the audience was like, wow, thank you for asking that. Okay. Uh, I think this is one of our last questions. Uh, should a reserve have a separate budget allocation? Okay, so yes, and it's called your balance sheet. <laughs> so, I mean, not your balance sheet, your income statement. Um, Sharon kind of talked about this more in the operating budget, um, and a lot of boards do this also with their reserve. If you're a larger community or you have a lot of projects, let's say you're a townhome community and you've got to repair a sec, you know, sections of roofs, you're also painting or replacing fascia gutters and downspouts on certain other areas too. There is nothing wrong with showing the allocations in the reserve to be able to help educate your homeowners where you intend on spending the money. Meaning, instead of just saying that you're putting $45,000 into the reserves this year and you're going to be spending $90,000, maybe put you're going to be spending that, you know, or maybe you're going to be spending like $150,000, let's just say. Put that you're going to spend $90,000 on the pool to do whatever. Put that you're going to do forty thousand in resurfacing the tennis, uh, uh, resurfacing the tennis courts. You are more than welcome to go ahead and break that budget out um, when it comes to the reserve. Um, and here in the state of Georgia, there is no requirement for you to use it or lose it. So if you do allocate expenditures in the reserve fund and not use them in this year for that pool project. The good news is you don't lose it and you are able because of uh, the balance sheet and the income statement, you're able to show the transactions of, hey, here's the variance. We didn't spend this money. Your manager is going to be communicating that and you can communicate why uh, that money was not being spent. So um, Sharon, do you have anything to add on that particular question on whether or not the budget should be allocated for reserves? Um, Yes, I, I, I took it a different way too, and this is another thought. Um, there are some communities that have, you know, a million dollars in reserves. On your balance sheet, you can earmark certain amounts of that million dollars for different projects. Say, for example, 
you need to save because the reserve study, you need to save some money for um, road resurfacing. You can actually divide up your reserve buckets on the balance sheet to be specific. And sometimes that's easier to communicate to the homeowner why you're having uh, to continue to collect res uh, assessments to, and maintain reserves. Because sometimes they'll look and say, why do I need any to pay any more money in? We've got a million, not realizing that half of that's going to be going to paving in 10 years. So it's sometimes good. You can break it up on the balance sheet and have a general reserve and a specific reserve on your balance sheet. Say, so use that loosely because sometimes that can also overcomplicate things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, use it, use it to the best of your ability. But yes, I would agree with Sharon, especially for larger associations that are dealing with much larger dollar figures. I think breaking it out like that is very helpful because there is this false sense of funding because they mm -hmm. see a really heavy pocketbook and they're like, why would I? You know, I'm only going to live here for two years. Why would I have to worry about that? Well, every single dollar that is in the reserve account is earmarked every single dollar. It's just choosing how you are going to spend it from year over year. So um, thank you to everybody who joined us this evening. I thought the questions were wonderful. This was an excellent they were presentation. Very good. I hope uh, that Sharon and I have been able to appropriately uh, get you started uh, back to school, we should say, for Budget Boot Camp. Um, if you definitely have any residual questions related to what we talked about in your heritage client, please get with your community association manager. Um, we'd love to be able to have the opportunity um, to help further explain anything. If you are a self-managed friend or not yet a heritage client and you have some questions, feel free to contact me directly, um, mrogers at heritageproperty.com. And uh, we are getting ready our next upcoming class for Heritage University. I think it's going to be over association rules. So we're going to go back, you know, we're going to give you whiplash. We're going to put you right back into our seven part board basics series. And we're going to talk all about rules. So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about enforcement and why it's important and why communities exist and why governance is so important and what is a declaration, what is a bylaw? Well, now we're gonna go ahead and continue into that enforcement procedure process. And in two weeks, we're gonna talk about everything association rules. So we hope that you can join us. Um, if this is your first time, I hope you enjoyed yourself. And if you are a returning friend, Thank you again for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the audience next time. Have a great day, everybody.